Hi there Capricorn, welcome to your August 2018 love reading. It's Raina here and um, a little bit of a, a different type of um, idea that I have here for this month. I'm going to be using my typical Norman, Norman uh, Morgan Greer deck as the most of the spread. And for the challenge position, I'm using one of my Wild Unknown Tarot cards. I got my payoff when I did Virgo's reading because I got the Plucked Chicken Death card. Uh, this um, Wild Unknown Tarot deck, I really enjoy the, the, the artwork, which are like pen and ink drawings. But they have like a very goth, kind of a vibe to them. Not all of the cards, but uh, that's why I picked it for the challenge position. And then I'm going to end the reading with the Sandra Ann Taylor Oracle card, um, Energy Oracle it's called, okay? So um, just putting my cards in different piles. Now this one is its own card, so this is going to be the centerpiece of this reading for you. Now, I'm glad I didn't make that mistake because I was going to pick out a card right then. This is going to be that challenge position. So this is the Wild Unknown um, deck. Now, the one thing I want to say about this is that it doesn't matter if I pick the card upright. I will be reading it in the challenge position, whether that's the upright position or the reversed position. See, this is an example of a really pleasant image. Isn't that beautiful? I love this. This is the th um, the Three of Cups. Oh, wow. I love that. I love it so much. Okay, I'll just continue. I'm really digging this light. I don't, um, I guess it's called a ring light that people use for their readings. My camera isn't, you know, top of the line. So it's not that it's... Um, one of those DSL cameras or anything. But still, um, light is always good. Natural light is the best. It's like when you get that certain golden natural light, you're like feeling like a million dollars. Okay. Okay. And then I guess I'll well, I'll hold off on the Oracle card until I get there. I'll put these off <laughs> camera. So the heart of the matter is the Eight of Cups. This is leaving what no longer serves you and hopefully moving in a direction that is more fulfilling. That doesn't mean jumping from one relationship to the other, obviously. You could be going it alone, but you are feeling a sense of emptiness, perhaps, lack of fulfillment within a relationship, and it's time to leave. In August, we are coming off of eclipses in both a, a, a solar eclipse in Cancer, which is your seventh house, and this lunar eclipse, which is an Aquarius, now that's your second house. And I'm obviously um, generalizing here. Your personal chart may show a way different situation. But, you know, going into it from that angle, you are seeing a lot of change. All of us are seeing a lot of change. And you actually had a full moon back at the end of June. Who knows? Maybe that is connected to that full moon in your sign in June which activated that first and seventh house polarity with the sun in your seventh house, which always brings about me versus we, you know. What do I need that, that I'm not feeling that I'm getting within this relationship? And should I stay here? The challenge position is the three of cups. To me... The number three can be three parties involved. So you may have like finally left a situation where the other party was um, cheating. Now, 
I guess you could have, you could be the one that's leaving for another person. However, um, this is also a card that I think could be like somebody who's socializing too much, drinking, you know. Um, the the drinking bone is connected to the partying bone or the or the socializing bone. So the person who is going out a lot, who likes to go out a lot, may tend to um, get involved with too much drinking and therefore it puts a strain on a serious relationship. For some reason, Pisces came into my mind. Now, Pisces <laughs> is ruled by Neptune and, and one of the key words of Neptune is addiction. So Pisces always has that thrown in their face. But it's not so much the sign of Pisces. It could be that, I mean, the sun sign. It could be somebody who has Mars in Pisces or um, Pisces rising, moon in Pisces. Uh, Neptune is about escapism. Um, all water signs are prone to drowning their sorrows because they, they deal with the watery element. They also love living by oceans and lakes, bodies of water. So you could be with somebody who perhaps is a, is a water sign, Scorpio is the other water sign, Cancer, Pisces, who just doesn't cut it for you anymore. And maybe there's addiction involved or simply another party involved. Um, the foundation of this reading is the Empress card. This could have different connotations, as do all of these cards, actually. Um, the Empress is connected to Venus. This is, a, this is connected to love, but also sensuality. So some of you Cappies may have, like, kind of um, awakened, awoke <laughs> your... Um, I was thinking of Fifty uh, Shades of Grey... I didn't read that, didn't see the movie, but um, some kind of um, sleeping giant, maybe you've, um, I don't know if it's awoke, I, I have like a minor in linguistics, I should know better than this, but awakened a sleeping giant within you, uh, found your, your sensuality, or it could be that you have gotten pregnant, if you are a man, um, please disregard this. But um, that this is the Earth Mother, so you certainly can be this. But you may, who knows? You may have had to leave, even though you're pre maybe because you're pregnant, you have to leave a situation. You you, it's possible that you don't want to do it, but you know that it's the best thing for you. Um, the Empress is connected to Taurus particularly. Yes, Libra, I had a debate with somebody about this, and they were right. It is because of the Venus connection. It's also connected to Libra, but everything about the Empress screams Taurus to me, and Taurus is a fellow Earth sign, so it's possible that a Taurus person is involved, and maybe this is on your end, that you have... Um, that you have like gotten together with a Taurus person. I, I was getting distracted because I was thinking about if you're with somebody who got somebody else pregnant and this is the hoochie mama in question. <laughs> I'm being like really um, corny today. I, I even um, wrote stud muffin on another video so I don't know what's gotten into me. But anyway, we'll just leave that there. Um, The higher message is the Four of Cups, and I think this is a great spiritual lesson. Um, and this goes two ways, I think. I always would think of the person who is staring stone-faced and is indifferent, is not happy with this relationship. Kind of like what is prompting this. And for sure, um, when you're not in love anymore, it is what it is, right? However... This, there's a cup being offered to this person. So love is being offered to this person. And it's possible that you are incapable of receiving love. I mean, that's always a possibility. 
I think, with this card. And I think it's an important thing to consider because make sure with that Eight of Cups that you're leaving a situation for the right reasons. Don't leave a situation because someone loves you and you can't accept love. You can only accept negative situations. However, I, I have a feeling that that is not really what is going on because we have this Three of Cups in the challenge position. So I suspect that it's more the case that you're dealing with someone who is really maybe not staying home at night. Maybe they're running this, you know, hanging out in bars or doing things like that. Um, I think this is particularly true if the person is a Pisces. Sorry to pick on Pisces because they kind of like to hang out with others and do stuff like that. Or, or, a fire sign or an air sign and actually I did get this for the practical advice so maybe this is a Libra because there, this is a cardinal sign Aquarius is the other um, air sign in Gemini this is a practical advice this is talking about um, feeling anxious so you know don't don't like sweep your feelings under the rug if you're feeling anxious by a relationship, deal with it. Getting back to that Four of Cups, honor your feelings. Don't don't um, stay in a relationship where somebody is offering you love if you're not feeling it. I think that is the better way of looking at it than the other thing I was saying. Because um, I actually got a similar thing with um, Libra just now. I wonder if uh, you're, you are connected to a Libra person. Because um, what can happen is that you may feel guilt that you're with someone who is maybe um, they are a decent person and you have, maybe you're the one who's had an affair and you're kind of, um, you feel like you did the, the wrong thing, which, you know, I'm not in favor of affairs, but they happen but you just were in denial that you had a disconnect with your marriage or your significant relationship. The other thing with that three of cups that I want to say is be careful of French friends that you have that might be poisoning the well. You could have friends telling you to leave a situation because they're jealous, because they don't have a partner and they want you to be like them. So be very careful about being influenced by others because they could be poisoning the well. Um, I think, uh, and I was going to say women do this, but that's not fair because I, I think men can do this too. If, you know, there's a pack of men and they're like all these um, guys that always hang together and then one guy gets married and it's like his wife becomes the enemy, you know? So... Um, we have to, we have to like, uh, it can, it can work both ways. Okay. Hopefully the landscapers aren't coming here. I'm going to just plow through this, even though there's noise all of a sudden. Um, what's coming in is represented by the five of pentacles. So we have these two, um, kind of like we call them challenging cards in a row. So, um, dealing with anxiety and having to deal with maybe feelings of lack consciousness where you're tempted to, you know, with the Eight of Cups, you may not have left, but you're tempted to leave. You're tempted to leave maybe even into somebody else's arms because you feel like somebody is showing you interest. And that, that can be a huge mistake. Don't, the, the Five of um, pentacles can be that sense of limited thinking where you believe that, oh my God, I have to do this now because, you know, I'm not, you know, there might not be anything for me in the future with, with, with a relationship. What if I never, what if nobody ever shows an interest in me ever again? And then it's like, I've got to just go with this other person. And that would be foolish. Um, First of all, if you're meant to be with somebody, there's nothing that can keep you apart. 
I don't believe that. I mean, maybe temporarily, but not ultimately. And even if there's like a twin flame situation where you know that there's somebody out there for you, but you haven't met them in the physical, you still have that energetic bond, I feel. And that never goes away. You know, we're always into this physical manifestation of things. But if you feel a strong connection to someone, that's it. You know that they're out there. Um, and there may be yearning to get back, to get with them, but make sure that you're not so desirous of a soulmate or a twin flame that you are just doing it uh, impulsively. And I, I never um, think of <laughs> Capricorns as impulsive creatures, but it's possible that love is the one irrational area for you. I find that people that are very rational, <laughs> you know, tend to be irrational in relationships because relationships are not like, you know, um, gold coins that are you can hold in your hand and they're, very, you know, they're tangible. Um, emotions are very irrational, so it's right along the lines of that. The outcome is a judgment card, and um, again, uh, what you sow, you shall reap. And I'm saying that to cheer you up. I'm not saying that to scare you. Um, if you live in integrity, if even if you have to leave a marriage, I think you can do so grace, gracefully and graciously. And um, this may indicate that you are going to leave you're going to decide to get divorced and you're going to require a legal judgment. This card is connected to Pluto, I believe. So it's a card of rebirth. Okay. And some of you Capricorns may be really, uh, shedding some old skin because you have Pluto in your sign. You have Saturn in your sign. You have a lot on your plate right now anyway and this may be why um, things are coming to a head at this time with the with the cancer solar eclipse I mean that um, is your mar marriage sector that doesn't mean that you're going to get married it could be that you're going to start divorce proceedings because the seventh house can be legal matters so um, but that could be an, a whole new lease on life and um, with Capricorns, a lot of the sticking points have to do with, you know, oh, I'm doing something, I'm going against tradition, um, marriage is supposed to be forever, yada, yada. And, you know, that, that is, that's something that I'm not going to argue with people if that's their belief, but I think it's a limiting belief. Um, one of the reasons why I'm not a big marriage fan to begin with, it might have served its purpose at some point, but I'm not sure that it does now. Um, and I'm really, I'm really um, a piece of work, let's put it that way, because I have all kinds of conflicting views on things. So uh, don't, don't even bother trying to figure me out. Um, so anyway, um, I mean, sometimes if somebody heard me talk, they'd probably think I was like, you know, an ultra conservative, you know. So um, <laughs> I've just got a whole lot going on here. But you, some of you may be, may be understanding where I'm coming from. You may have a lot of Aquarius energy in you, and you, you're not like the typical Capricorn individual. So um, just want the highest good for everyone concerned is basically what I can offer as advice. And um, let me pick uh, that Oracle card, and we'll see if it has any kind of... Um, I don't know, connection to this reading, offer any further insights. Oh my God. Okay. I just want to tell you something. I get a little bit irritated with some of these Oracle decks because I tend to pick the same cards over and over again, even after shuffling. And I also get irritated with these Oracle decks. I mean, incorporating them in a reading that's not general because I, you know, sometimes you get these cards that don't really go along with what it's supposed to be. You know, talking about money when it's love. Look at this one. Check this out. <laughs> 
first of all, I haven't got, I don't know if I've ever picked this card at all. Oh, check this out too. Um, now this is for July. Because uh, I'm recording this in July. This is the date of the lunar eclipse in Aquarius. And Aquarius, by the way, is a sign of freedom and unconventional thinking and being. So it's really breaking free when lunar eclipse is like busting loose, you know. So chances are you're watching this in July more than in August, and so you, you can get the benefit of that in advance. Alrighty then. Um, and, and by the way, um, the number 27, if you, if you uh, break it down, if you add up those numbers, it comes to a, a 9, which is the number of endings. Okay, letting go, moving on. This card shows someone walking away from an existing situation. She is closing the gate behind her and is walking away into a misty, unknown future. This card upright reveals that it could be time for you to make a similar decision. There may be something that you, you're finished with, perhaps a career goal, a relationship, or a long-term experience of any kind. The familiarity, <laughs> familiarity of the situation may be enticing, but you're now ready to look at your options on the open road ahead. In reality, an important new beginning is at hand. This card also indicates that now would be a good time to let go of an old habit, emotional pattern, or false belief. No matter how deeply ingrained a negative pattern may be, you now have the power to release it and move on to a freer, happier, I mean, healthier way of thinking and relating to yourself and others. Whether it's in the inner or outer world, this card is telling you that you have the readiness and resources to walk away from the old and move forward now. And the... Affirmation is, it is safe and comfortable for me to move on. I consider all my options and then take action on my own behalf. Well, I can't say much more than that. I'm so happy to get that confirmation from the Eight of Cups. Okay, Capricorn, that's what I have for you. If you'd like a private reading, please click the link below. I offer all kinds of readings, but in this particular case, I offer specific love readings, which I incorporate your natal chart with a tarot spread and look at your situation from both angles, but particularly analyzing it via astrology because that provides me with a lot of insight into your personality and what may be motivating you to walk away or you know if I'm comparing two people's charts and stuff like that okay take care of yourselves have an awesome August bye